Hi, welcome to my workshop. My name's Darren, and today I want to talk to you about first aid kits. Now, I know that's not the most exciting topic, so I'll keep this short, but please watch it for a few reasons. Some of you may not have first aid kits. I want to encourage you to get some. Some may have poorly equipped or poorly located first aid kits. Let's sort that out. And some of you may have better first aid kits than me, so perhaps we can all learn from you. That's what the comments field is for. Now, before I go any further, let me be really clear. I'm not a medic, I'm not a paramedic, I'm not here to teach you first aid, and I'm certainly not here to say this is the only way to set out a first aid kit. I'm gonna show you what I've got, and we'll create a bit, of a bit of a dialogue in the comments down below, and we'll end up with something better. All right, so let's take a look. Okay, as they say in real estate, location, location, location. So I've got my first aid kit here, in this little portable trolley which stays at the end of my workbench. You can see on the side, I've got a very clear first aid little symbol, and there's one around the other side. Another first aid symbol there, although the colors aren't correct on that one, it still gives a very good idea. And the first aid box itself is clearly marked. Now the reason it's here and so well marked is perhaps it might not be me that's looking for the first aid kit. What if worst case scenario, I cut something off, I fall to the ground, I'm bleeding, but a neighbor or perhaps my girlfriend hears something and comes to help me, I want them to be able to find the first aid kit without having to search for it. I want it to stick out and say to everybody, hey, here it is. So location and clear signage, very important. Okay, let's start with the most used and most obvious part of the first aid kit, and that's band-aids. I keep band-aids here. There's something I am most likely to use. I haven't since I've made the first aid kit, but obviously over the years I've had splinters and small nicks in the workshop. Uh, most of my cuts have actually come off the edges of pieces of timber that have just been planed and left sharp edges as opposed to tools, so something to watch out for there. So yeah, got a little tub of some band-aids. Obviously everybody wants band-aids in their first aid kit in the workshop. They'll get a lot of use. Uh, now just to the left of that, I've got some little bottles of saline. The saline, uh, I've got four bottles thereof. I just so as I can flush my eyes, if I get sawdust or something else in my eyeballs, then here we go, I can give it a bit of flush. If I have a deep cut, I can also flush any dirt out of the cut with the saline, so handy thing to have. That's saline. Then we've got regular bandages here, 10 centimeter wide bandage, a 7.5 centimeter wide bandage. Also in here, I have a triangle bandage. Uh, why do I have a triangle bandage? Well, it came in another first aid kit, <laughs> so I thought I'd transfer it across. Certainly handy thing to have. You've probably seen these ones before. These are the ones you can use to make a sling if you have to. But it also, it's you know if you have to stop bleeding, you can use it too. Uh, bandage is well worth having. That's standard bandages. Down over here, I have a few different bits and pieces. Firstly, tweezers for removing splinters. As you can see, they've never actually been used. They're actually quite new. Nice little pair of scissors if I need to cut a bandage. I don't want to have to go hunting around elsewhere for scissors. Some tape for holding these sorts of bandages together once they're on. There's some bandage tape. But down here, this is the gold. These are cohesive bandages. I've got a few different sizes. I've got three of them. Let me pull those out. So you can see I've got three different widths of bandages. Perhaps this one for going around fingers or maybe for going around arms or legs. But the joy of cohesive bandages, as the name might suggest, is that they stick to themselves. So you don't have to find a bandage clip or some other tape to keep them in place. You just wrap it around and you're good to go and they stay on. Uh, so I thoroughly recommend cohesive bandages in the workshop. You'll probably be in the workshop by yourself. You'll probably be bandaging yourself up one-handed because you'll probably be bandaging your other hand. Thoroughly recommend cohesive bandages for those reasons. In here, I've got some gauze. You can see we've got some gauze. You just slap that over the wound and bandage it in place. Great for stopping bleeding. Quite a few of those because uh, you know, once you've opened the packet, 
you pretty much got to use the whole lot they'll get contaminated you don't want to use something like that that's been sitting there open and risk putting further germs into the wound so they're in there and last and hopefully something that I will never ever use I've got some plastic bags um, and in here you can see I've actually got a plastic bag inside a plastic bag both of which are open heaven forbid I should ever need to I can pop a finger in the bag or other buddy part seal that then pop some cold water down in the out a bag here and uh, keep the whole thing cool on the way to the hospital to have it reattached so uh, that's why that's there and I've got a second bag just in case they're not sealed because you do not want to be having to open them up while you're trying to put a finger in them you want to get that in there as easy as possible you're still going to have to seal it up but at least that's half of the job done okay so that brings us to the end of a quick but I think very important video obviously not the most exciting woodworking topic there is but maybe the most important uh, if I can achieve two things out of this video it's that number one everybody has a first aid kit in their workshop and number two everybody knows exactly where it is they can get to it easy it's clearly marked so as people who come in to help you can find it and you can find it let's face it if you've got a first aid kit hidden at the back of a cupboard that you haven't used in three years and you're not even sure exactly where it is you cut yourself and you spend five ten minutes looking for it if it's a bad cut that's going to be a very frustrating <laughs> very frustrating few minutes while you look for that so have a first aid kit have it clearly marked so you can tell what it is have it somewhere you can easily find it and make it so other people can find it too if they're coming to your aid uh, now as to what's in the first aid kit this is what I have I do recommend you have some of the things I have perhaps everything I've gotten here things like plastic bags and bandages and band-aids and tweezers they're all pretty important but perhaps you have other things in your first aid kit that I don't have that you think are pretty important so if you do pop them in the comments down below and we'll all learn from you all right thanks very much have a great day and I will catch you in the next video bye for now